Let us start. There is a very good program that is launched by Ministry of External Affairs. SAMEEP. S-A-M-E-E-P. SAMEEP. SAMEEP is a program to engage the students and bring awareness in the students about the affairs of Ministry of External Affairs. About the affairs of Ministry of External Affairs. Students and MEA Engagement Program. Students and Ministry of External Affairs Engagement Program called SAMEEP. If you observe afflate, except for prepare, preparation in civil services, generally the Ministry of External Affairs have started a program called SAMEEP. SAMEEP. S -A -M -E -P. This program is Pan-India program. Across various states, students were selected and they were trained under various programs and schemes of Ministry of External Affairs and more than that, they will be thought about the importance of foreign policy, the ingredients of foreign policy and the modern foreign policy methods and the diplomatic tactics, all these things. Earlier, many years back, there is a program by India, Government of India with respect to No India Program, KIP. This question was also asked in mains many times. The children of Indian diaspora who reside in various parts of the world, most of them they don't know the Indian culture and Indian way of life, Indian institutions. This No India program is a technique to make the people, the children, young children, adult children, to learn about India. This was also launched earlier. But more than Indian diaspora children knowing about India, Indian children should know about India's foreign policy. The students should also learn certain diplomatic issues. And most of us cannot even spell out the diplomats' names and we don't have role models in diplomats. You all know Sri Krishna during, before Mahabharata Yuddha went as a diplomat to the court of Dhritarashtra to please them diplomacy is in fact is an art a diplomat can break or make relationship but we need an effective diplomacy in most of the things Indian foreign service for most of the students aspirants is a matter of chance rather than choice very few people will opt Indian foreign service as, a, as their first choice most of them will get the Indian Foreign Service by their rank. Indian Administrative Service, Indian Foreign Service, Indian Police Service, for all the services, there is the same exam. And diplomacy should be nurtured to make young brains to enter into diplomatic mindset. This was, this program was, SAMIP was launched now. No India program earlier was asked by many exams, in many exams and also by UPSC many times. I think this SAMEEP is also important for you. As IR students, even in mains, you have Indian diasporic issues and issues relating to MEA, Ministry of External Affairs. In that also you can add SAMEEP. Okay, first thing. And second thing, you should also read about No India program extensively. Earlier we have Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs. After BJP government coming to power, 
this Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs got merged into Ministry of External Affairs. Now we don't have Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs separately. This Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs got merged into Ministry of External Affairs. This is one important foreign policy decision taken by the new government. And also, earlier we have three categories, NRIs, PIOs and OCA. Non-resident Indian will have Indian passport. He will have Indian citizenship. And for all practical considerations, he is called an Indian. But the only thing is, he will be residing outside country. Okay, that's called an NRI. He is an Indian citizen. Whereas, OCIs and PIOs, they don't have Indian citizenship. Now, there is no concept called PIO, person of Indian origin. This PIO concept got merged into OCI, Overseas Citizen of India. Okay, and Overseas Citizen of India will have some status in India. NRIs will have voting rights. OCIs don't have voting rights. NRIs will have voting rights. OCIs don't have voting rights. Yesterday, there is a news. The news is, NRIs can avail proxy votes. Government of India is thinking to make a reform. They can have proxy votes. For example, if NRI wanted to vote, he has to come to India and vote. But now, there is section 20, 20A of Representation of People's Act 1951. Section 20, capital A of Representation of People's Act 19, 1951. Now, they are going to make amendment for that. An NRI can vote, can give a vote in a proxy way. So, they will find out the modalities, how they can make it out. This is the not yet concluded, no conclusions were made, but still process is going on. Let us hope that NRS will also participate in the political process. The reason is, for all practical purposes, they are the citizens of India. They can also hold other card. They can have a lot of facilities in India. Why not proper voting pattern for them? Though they are allowed to vote, they need not come to India to vote for that. So, these are all the things that were discussed in the MEA in the recent past. Next, Project Darpan. Project Darpan. Project Darpan. Project Darpan is a project for digital advancement in post offices for a new India. The digital advancement for rural post office for a new India. The digital advancement of rural post office for a new India. This is called that pun. The digital advancement for a rural post office for a new India. Okay. The issue here is wherever you go, you may not find a bank. You might not find any facility, but the postal system in India was so extensive that in most of the villages, rural areas, the last mile connectivity is given by post offices. We should not ignore them. To modernize post offices, in 2008, an ambitious program was launched by the government of India which was also asked in the exam called Project Arrow. To modernize the post offices in India, in the year 2008, a program was launched called Project Arrow. That is modernization of post offices. And now, Darpan, digitizing the rural post offices. As you all know, digital connectivity is more important and digitization and IT development in the last mile connectivity institutions is very important. And last two years back, we have a scheme called payment banks. Payment banks. As banks cannot be established each and every part of the country, because if you want to establish a bank, the banking system will also see the viability of establishment. After all, at the end of the day, banking is a business. Banking is a business. 
it has social objectives but also economic objectives when it is not viable when the establishment cost is more than the business profit then banking system cannot be established everywhere to go for simple fu banking functions deposits and money transfers withdrawals payment banks concept have come post offices department of post is one of the important payment bank right now which was started and post offices also functioning as payment banks in this perspective digitization of post offices is very important from last two years the concept of payment bank is appearing in the newspapers and as far as my knowledge goes no prelims question or mains question was asked from last two years on payment bank though it is outdated now still there is a chance that you might get a question you might get a question you will get a debit card but not a credit card in payment banks ok there are certain rules that we will discuss separately so post offices as act as payment banks also so for that reason digitization of post offices even MG Narega money transfer for all the purposes IT development in postal department is also an important thing ok next important issue is China India China border talks special representative 20th round border talks were started Ajit Doval said India China relationship should go beyond bilateral ties India China relationship should go beyond bilateral ties two great countries two powerful countries if they work together they can create a tremendous impact in the world in the region in the Asia and in the world so India and China their relationship should reach beyond borders and beyond bilateral issues and they should go better than the small issues like trade border and other things they should work together <coughs> next important article today almost all the newspapers wrote effectively is on Jerusalem in the UN UN General Assembly there is a resolution on Jerusalem whether Jerusalem the place located in Israel belongs to only to Israel or as you all know east in the eastern Jerusalem and the old city of Jerusalem you have many Palestinian population what is their condition so whether Jerusalem should brought should be brought to negotiation table or should be completely made as a capital of Israel is a question as you all know last week Trump wanted to transfer US embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem now everything about Jerusalem was become an important issue for that reason there are two three things one 172 countries 172 countries voted in the resolution 128 countries supported the resolution <coughs> including India 128 countries supported the resolution including India what do you mean by supporting the resolution all 128 countries wanted to bring this Jerusalem issue to the negotiation table rather than unilaterally declaring that Jerusalem is a part of Israel K 
Canada and Mexico abstained. You all know America, Canada, Mexico forms NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. Its NAFTA partners, Canada and Mexico, abstained. Its NATO partners like UK, Germany, France, UK, Germany, France regretted for the decision of America, declaring de facto, in a de facto way, Jerusalem is a capital of Israel, regretted for the decision of America. And India voted in favor of resolution. From last two, three years, there is a discussion that India is following real politics, practicality, pragmatism in politics, and have become a strong ally to Israel. And India have forgotten his its basic ideal in foreign policy, the two nation theory of Palestinians. But this move makes India again to follow its basic ideal in its foreign policy that is two nation theory, two nation solution for the Israel-Palestina conflict. Second aspect here, America openly have come out and created a deterrent effect in the minds of many countries by its statements, open statements. That means, if you vote in favor of resolution and against America, we will follow name and shame policy. But the world have become multipolar. Every country wanted to assert its role in foreign policy. And if you see the voting pattern, the countries are no more fearful about American hegemony in world politics. They know and they want independence in foreign policy making. The 128 countries voting in favor of the resolution shows that in spite of America's deterrence, countries wanted to maintain their own stand in their own foreign policy making. Even India, India, Israel ties are linked with this decision. But still, as you all know, India needs Israel and Israel needs India. It is a win-win partnership, mutually beneficial partnership. When everything goes practical, automatically India can take its own decision on various issues. If India needs Israel, Israel also needs India. The defense partnership between India and Israel is a mutually beneficial partnership. It is not only for India, but Israel also needs India. And the next contention is NSG. Whether America supports India's NSG membership. As you all know, Barack Hussein Obama tried hard to make, he tried hard to make India a member of NSG in his last minute. Trump have never assured that he is going to support India, never assured he is going to support India in energy. Now, we cannot say particular oath of India, oath given by India regarding Jerusalem issue, cannot decide India's candidature in energy. Last but not the least, as you all know, America's national security strategy is in favor of India. Even that we cannot completely trust. We cannot completely trust. This is analysis of the entire issue. In almost all the newspapers in India and the world today, this particular Jerusalem vote appeared in the headlines. Next important article, reading Rahul Gandhi's hand, purely political article, need not bother much about that need not bother much about that. Next article is on missing the pulse. Missing the pulse. In Gujarat elections, BJP did not get much support from farmers. In Gujarat elections, 
BJP did not get much support from farmers. In India, farmers need support. As we all know with the globalized tendencies, cheap agricultural products also coming into India. The FTAs and WTO rules also hit our farmers very hard. To support our farmers, now India is levying customs duty on import of pulses and particularly the pulses from China. Now customs duty was levied to protect our farmers. Indian cultivation of pulses also increases our nutritional value. But the article does not deal with nutrition other issues, but to just to protect the prices and the local production of pulses, this was made. The next important article is about who built the Indus Valley Civilization. Who built the Indus Valley Civilization? This might not be your Klim's question, but you can expect a question in prelims about Indus Valley Civilization. The reason is, recently scientists have discovered that, the historians have discovered that Indus Valley Civilization as we think, generally we say it is 2500, 3500 BC, but now it is more than 6000 BC times. Indus Valley Civilization dates back to much earlier times rather than 3500 BC or 2500 BC. You might get a question on various sites of Indus Valley Civilization, significance of Indus Valley Civilization rather than who built. In the article, there are many arguments, Vedic Aryans, Dravidians, Harappans, all these things. You might not get the question because there is no historical fact that who built it. Who built, there is no fact, it is not a factual question. So, in prelims perspective, it might not come, but you might get, see, Raki Gari in Haryana. In the article, there is a pinpoint, Raki Gari. Raki Gari is one of the recent sites that were excavated. You may get directly get a question on Raki Gari. You might directly get a question on Raki Gari in Haryana. Lothal, Dolvira, Surkodda, Harappa, Mohanjidaro. These topics, the river banks and the important mm, artifacts that are available, all these things might be our Klim's question. One question we can expect from Indus Valley Civilization. As you all know, Buddhism, every year one or two questions. Okay? These are the important current affairs. Apart from that, you have one more topic. State of World's Children 2017. State of World's Children 2017. UNICEF report have come on digital world. On digital world. There is a new concept called digital gender gap. There is a new concept called digital gender gap. Generally we always dis discuss about digital divide gender gap. But this is a concept digital divide with gender gap. That is males have digital accessibility more and digital awareness more than the females, than the females. Only 29 percent, only 29 percent of the online users are females in the world. Out of 100 percent of online users, only 29 percent are females. This data and uh, digital divide might be an essay question next year. Digital divide. You have to prepare for that. Even for GS, the digital divide. Rural, urban, male, female, educated, uneducated. This three dimensions should be touched. Male, female, rural, urban, literates, illiterates. Digital divide between and among these groups, you have to focus on much. Okay and also rich and poor, rich and poor, okay, these are the important things today.